From the greats of Larry Bird to the fame of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and everyone else in between. Welcome to Indiana State University, a mid-major program situated in Terre Haute, Indiana. But while this program is considered one of the many mid-majors in Division I basketball, at the same time, Indiana State is one of those programs where you can simply not tell the story of college basketball without mentioning Indiana State. And while Indiana State did get the short end of the stick, Indiana State year in and year out always seems to prove that they are one of the more quality mid-major programs in Division I basketball. So we go back into the mid-2010s, the early 2010s, and we try to run it back. Can we avenge Indiana State and how they were stuffed out of the tournament? And can we build Indiana State into more than just a team that builds a destiny of winning conference championships? Can we win a national championship? Welcome to the Indiana State Dynasty here on NCAA Basketball 10. In honor of March Madness, let's go ahead and dive right into it. Hey, what's going on everybody? This is John Jake Gaming on the mic here, coming at you with a brand new series. Yes, we are bringing back college basketball onto the channel. It's been a very long time since I've done anything college basketball related but we are back we have come to our senses especially during this march madness time we are going to be taking over the sycamores of indiana state indiana state known for being one of the best teams in the ncaa that did not get an opportunity to compete in the ncaa tournament but going into those late 2000s and early 2010s this was not necessarily the program that you saw today now this indiana state program this indiana state program it's an okay team for being a mid-major but it's not the same powerhouse that you see today we do have some key players on the squad uh they are going to be renamed in the near future uh for some of the, for those of you that are in that channel membership program or in discord but we're an okay team we're coming off of a 15 and 16 season but not only are we coming off of a 15 and 16 season that below 500 campaign we are going to be one of those teams in the conference that is not a top dog necessarily we're not the bottom but we're certainly not at on top by any means i mean there's several teams in our conference that are a little bit better than we are and just a quick look at what we have they say that we have a little bit of depth coming off the bench but not much so we'll dive into that shortly but this is kind of what we're looking with to start the season gonna be looking at a c plus overall team so we'll be an okay basketball team but we're not going to be a good basketball team so it should be interesting to see how we could build things moving forward Now, with that said, um, we are, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what our roster is going to look like to begin this season. And so this is what our team is uh, moving into year number one. And we have a decent starting lineup. We don't have a true center. Uh, definitely need to work on bringing some centers into our program. But we have some experience that we'll need to replace right away. Justin Hopkins is a junior. Malcolm Anderson's supposed to be our best player. He's a 77 overall. He's the best player on the team. And then we have a few other guards, guards on the squad. Some, a sophomore by James Douglas. And then some seniors in Devin Mosley and Leon Owens. So three out of the five people in our starting lineup are going to be uh, guys that... Hey, man, they are going to be those guys that uh, are senior laden, and we're going to have to find a way to replace. And we do have a couple of guys coming off of the bench as well. Uh, Nathan O'Neill, John Mullins, who I hope that we can mold moving forward. But the rest of this team uh, doesn't really uh, bring much to write home them out, to be honest with you. 
Uh, what I'll probably do is I'll probably redshirt a couple of these guys. Uh, actually, hold up now. Eddie Everidge is on this team. Yeah, we got to actually get this man into the rotation. So let me do that real quick. All right, so we made a couple of changes real fast, uh, real fast into our rotation. Eddie Everidge is going to be our eighth person. It's not going to necessarily start right away um, because we do have some quality big guys in Justin Hopkins and Malcolm Anderson. And then whatever change that I made to this roster is that I'm going to have Adinsia Diggs uh, go ahead and be red shirt for us this season. And then I think I'm also going to red shirt. Uh, Ismail Grease as well only a 59 overall that's not going to cut it so we are going to have a 13 man rotation overall unless there was something else actually a couple of these other uh, like shooting guards could probably also uh, get red shirted as well let's see here we got one two three shooting guard all right so we should be good after that so we're going to be coming into season number one with an 11 man at least 11 people to work from everyone else we're going to go ahead and have being redshirt for right now but with that said we do have a chance to take a look at our schedule going into this year and uh we actually have a a decent schedule our strength of schedule is three stars which is not bad it's really not bad for a mid-major uh but that just goes to show that hey uh we are not good enough uh as a mid-major for teams wanting to duck us right so a couple of games of note we do have louisville on the road for our very first game the louisville game will be interesting louisville is a lot better than what we seem them being today we do have a preseason tournament which i might dive into a little bit later and then we also have Iowa State as well and Arizona State, so multiple power conference opponents uh, that we do get to play up against in non-conference play. We'll eventually get into conference play in the January uh, part of our season. It looks like we start with our rival, Illinois State. We have Illinois State and Drake as our rivals. Uh, definitely want to at least go 2-2. Two and two against our rivals in this series and what i'll probably do i'll probably have like one episode a month want to try to keep it a little bit more in that traditional sense uh, because obviously i'm not going to play every single one of these games that would be way too time consuming but what i will certainly do is i'll play at least a couple of games per month uh per episode um Oh, but to any suggestions, because it's been a little bit since I've done a basketball series, but I think that is how I want to pace things as I'm looking through the rest of his schedule, as we have some familiar faces like Wichita State, who is in the Missouri Valley, for example. But one thing that is pretty cool about NCAA Basketball 10 is that we do get a chance to train our players before the season even starts. So I don't really have a good feel of our team. You know, we'll figure out how we want to specify things for future seasons but for now because i don't have a great feel of either how this game is going to play out or how our team is i am going to just go ahead and just keep things completely even between front court and back court and then also split time between our starters and reserves because i do want to make sure our starters are getting trained properly but at the same time ensure that our reserves are ready to step up in the future given that three of our five starters are going to be graduating at the end of this season so very imperative for us to make sure that we have a deeper rotation because we don't necessarily have a star on our team that being said though how we're going to handle recruiting is i want to have a mix of going after players that are in our pipeline and then going after the best quality player possible that is actually interested in coming to indiana state so how we're doing this is first we got to see what we have going on. And right now, we are looking at a need for the center position. We only have one true center. Would love to change that going into year number two. So I definitely want to bring in a center moving forward. Small forward, I feel like we're a little bit light there as well. And then small forward, we only have two small forwards as well. So... I'm going to go ahead and try to bring in a small forward. So, going to be very wing oriented in our recruiting because I think we have more than enough guards to handle our business if we need to. So, that being said, what is our challenges for this year? We actually do have challenges from our athletic director and 
the challenges for our athletic director don't seem too terribly egregious. I mean, very reasonable expectations, sign a two-star recruit, which we can actually kill two birds with one stone if we also sign a two-star center, and then sign someone that's at least a C defensively. Very reasonable expectations. I think we could handle that because looking at our short list, well, we happen to have multiple centers that meet that C quite criteria. This is kind of some of the players I want to bring in. I'm really interested particularly in Tim Anthony. I think he'll be my top target here in year number one. Um, getting him to leave Florida will be a challenge, but he is an all-state player in the state of Florida. I think he could really shine as someone that maybe is a two-star recruit, but probably plays better than a two-star, right? If that makes any sense. Someone that could contribute for us right away. If those ratings hold up, a few other players that I want to try and go after, Dante Jeffries uh, from Esmere, Delaware. He's an All-State player. Seems like someone that is a defensive-oriented player. Could be a backup rim protector for us, but doesn't provide much for us offensively. And then a couple of really good prospects at the small forward position that we found. Uh, Rupert Graves from Oregon, uh, Tim Andrews from Augusta, Maine, and Anthony Fisher out of Vermont. Some good players out of the small forward position. But Rupert Graves is definitely number one, and he's a top priority for us to try and bring in if we can at least help it. But guys, that is going to wrap us up here in the little intro of Indiana State Basketball coming to the channel. I'm really excited to bring this over to you guys, and I hope you enjoy this. Hopefully, you guys are also enjoying the March Madness that is happening around us as we speak. So, that being said, next episode, we are invited to this Anaheim Classic. We're certainly going to play that in the next episode, as well as maybe hop into a few of these other games that we could potentially jump into depending on if the game does end up cooperating with us i know ncaa 10 does have a reputation of crashing at certain points but definitely want to jump into some of these games if they are close of course but that being said hope you guys are excited for this series if you are make sure you go ahead and smack that like button hit that subscribe button as well if you do have to be brand new for in the channel this is john j gaming on the mic signing off but hoping you guys are all out there having a good one take care everybody